The you know, almost that, that tour that everybody said it shouldn't happen just because it's too cool a tour. And uh, we have such a camaraderie with the Metallica guys. So it's sort of like this little mini army that's just going against all standards and all the rules or history. two bands this hugely successful tour together. By the end of their 25-show U.S. tour, Guns N' Roses and Metallica will have played to over 800,000 people. One of the big things I learned was that everybody had wanted this tour so bad and worked so hard to make it to be able to do this tour, you know, Metallica through their touring and through our touring to be able to do a stadium tour together, that we thought that when we got here, it'd just be perfect, it'd be so cool. Well, it kind of turned out to be that, wait a minute, this is so cool that why shouldn't this be the hardest thing we've ever done? What you basically have out here is you have two full you know, you have all the steel and all that crap, but you have two bands that have basically each their own production. We have our whole thing with the mirrors and the snake pit and drum kit and flip around everywhere and all that kind of crap. We have a horn section now, and we've had for a while. Mm -hmm. And another, you have Teddy um, Andriotis, he plays harmonica and keyboards as well. So we have that, we have backup singers. to do this right and give the kids you know i mean we could have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars a week if we had had the same stage set up both of us the same lighting rig the same everything we didn't feel it'd be right for metallica to come and do like a normal open like an opening act amount of playing time on stage that would really be unfair to their show and would like you know kind of make them look smaller and we didn't want to do that we wanted them to look as big as they are <laughs> McKagan. It's a couple hours before the show, and Duff's going to take us around back here to show us how this stage set is actually put together. After Metallica goes off, it can take up to about two hours for their stage set to be ready, and Duff's going to show us what they're actually doing during that time. I don't know ready? How, I don't know how they do it. You better know. I'll, I'll wing it. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. This is Axel. That's, uh, uh, yeah, Axel. And the reason it says no smoking is because of the oxygen thing. And this is my stuff. You know, my old punk rock thing and, and vests and... Any new punk rock stuff? What no, thing? no, this is uh, Gianni Pistacchi. Ah, very nice. He seems to be a favorite among the band, that designer. Yeah, and he's, he loves us too. Black stuff. Wow, those are really nice. I haven't seen these ones yet. I guess that's when he plays tennis. Slash, I never knew. Okay. What do you do for uh water ski? Water ski. Yeah. Why is that? <clears throat> Have you I'm always water skiing or is this Yeah, a new I was thing? like in the uh, no, I was in like in the competition water skiing. Really? You know, yeah, I, I used to be really active in sports and, and uh you know, I used to play football and I was in gold gloves, boxing. 
uh, baseball and basketball. Or... Then how did you end up in a band? Um, how did you have time to learn how to play I don't know. Guitar? Help me. I don't know. There's a lot of people we uh, get to play in front of that probably wouldn't come see us on our own, so it worked good for us. Do you think that the, a typical Guns fan is someone that also likes Metallica? Probably now, hopefully. <laughs> This tour is a perfect example of, you know, there's, there's a great package, you know, I could have never ever seen this, you know. Recession or not, nobody's gonna miss this. play these stadiums and stuff like that, every show has kind of a different personality. And you know, when we played in Pittsburgh, when the, the whole time we were on stage, it was just pissing down. And... Raining? Yeah, Raining. yeah, <laughs> raining. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, for like two and a half hours, you're just out there in these like storms and stuff, and it really created like a great vibe. Well, New York shows went really good. Um, Why? It just happened, I guess. When you're, and when we're on later in the night, you know, when it's all dark, you get to utilize your lights more. And, uh, I think we we look better in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Mentioned Giant Stadium the first night was a really good show. Mm -hmm. Was that because the fans were nuts? Was that because I don't, you they guys, weren't nuts? You know? There was just more energy coming off of them, and uh, I think a lot of it to do was with uh, Baz and Mike Monroe were standing on the side of the stage, and that made me really happy. And it was just like, you know, just go off. I was really happy that they were there. Who's Baz? Uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. Yeah. Okay. And and Mike Monroe, and right. that just was made me like just work harder, I really like that. Um, and the second night in Giant Stadium was, you know, I got I got hit with a couple things a couple different times. Once when I was like thanking the crowd and then I got hit later and it was just kind of like, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna allow this. <laughs> Guns N' Roses have packed a whole career of controversy into just one tour. The Guns N' Roses Metallica shows have not gone off without a hitch. There have been riots, legal hassles, and technical problems. You haven't noticed I ain't playing a guitar tonight. <coughs> For obvious reasons. In Montreal was just really creepy. Nothing against the people in Montreal. We had a great time hanging out there. I think it was the building itself. It was like the first show back after like four Date, so Axel had some problems with his throat and so on. So we were back again, Montreal. Everybody was very excited to be back and playing. And for the first hour and 10 minutes or whatever we played, I mean, it was great. We were really, it was really good for us. It was looking to be one of the best ones. Basically, our pyro guy will come in and say, uh, you know, if something's going to be changed. If not, he won't come in there and everything will be the same every night. He came in and said, okay, the fade to black stuff is going to be out on the wings, so don't go out there. I said, okay. Uh, but he didn't specify that it was in addition to what's already there. So I walked from the wings right on to where one of them was and just... The last couple seconds before the queue, I knew it was just eerie. I could just tell that he shouldn't be standing where he was standing. And then the, the flame from hell just comes, like, moving down the stage, eight feet tall, and just completely engulfs him. We got a friend of ours, brought him out from a band called Metal Church. He's filling in for us. I want you to give uh, Mr. John Marshall a hand over here. All right. <laughs> So how are you? What What is the prognosis <laughs> with your arm? Let's get that over with. Sorry. I mean, it's burned. <laughs> uh, well, it was, it's, it was minor second degree, most of this arm, and a little on the back of this one. But the back of the hand is where it was, was the worst. 
And right here is okay, that's where my wristband was. So <laughs> I'm all right here. <laughs> yeah, longer wristband. <laughs> 